guys it's will from will's rush page here uh this might be video number five i'm not sure anyway i'm trying something new uh so bear with me i've got some music playing in the background I'm not sure if you can hear that uh but i wanted to add a little ambiance to uh the video and uh also i'm gonna try and share uh share my screen as well so we're gonna try if you're watching or you're just tuning in this uh will be uh recorded or it is recording and I will repost it, so not to worry. Uh, what I want to do today, I want to show you uh, my CDs and DVDs, which I haven't done yet. Um, not all of them are with me. Some of them are in the house somewhere, downstairs maybe, but that's okay, we'll make do. Um, hopefully, let me know if the music is too loud and if it's overpowering my voice, just so I know, so that I can improve and make an adjustment, okay? Anyway, it is Sunday, January the 16th, and uh, it's hard to believe that over a month has passed uh, since the news of Neil uh, passing. Um, sad news, of course. It's amazing how time does fly by. So uh, I don't know how you're all dealing with it. I've been listening to Neil's books um, on audio and uh, kind of listening to a lot of Rush uh, and going into the deeper cuts and a lot of the 80s stuff and listening to the lyrics and the music, obviously. Huge impact. Just the deeper you dig, the, the more you realize the impact of a man as a person, as a writer, as a musician. Anyway, that being said, um, as I said a minute ago, I've got some music going on today. So I want to show you something off topic first. This is a record I picked up in Montreal back in October when I was there. Um, and this is Steve Ray Vaughan and Albert King. And I'm spinning this right now. Uh, and the album is called In Session. It's a live recording of the two of them playing in the studio that was recorded back in, I believe, 83. Uh, and it was broadcast on TV here in Canada. And uh, several years later, the, the show surfaced online on, with the internet. Uh, but I managed to find this. I didn't realize until I found this in Montreal that it, it was produced uh, to record. So this is excellent. I read the history on this. I knew the history, but I reread the history. And Stevie Ray Vaughan is about 29 years old here, and Albert King had just turned 60. Now, I don't know if you guys know, everybody knows Stevie, but I don't know if you know Albert. He's one of my favorite blues guitarists. Um, extensive history, and I'll probably do another video just on some blues uh, players, uh, because I am also a huge blues fan, and I have my favorites. Albert is one of them. Um, absolutely amazing guitar player. The cool thing about this is that uh, the two of them both take turns uh, playing lead and rhythm, and there's some amazing playing on here, uh, some extensive longer uh, blues cuts, and uh, some really cool versions of a couple of uh, Stevie's tunes like Pride and Joy. Um, anyway, I'll show you the back. That's what I'm spinning right now, and uh, you can probably hear this on YouTube. Everything's on uh, YouTube. Ray, you have the CD. That's cool. Yeah, this this is great. One of my favorites. I'm on my second play right now, so I will just uh, wanted to share that with you today. Um, so yeah, we talked about Neil. Uh, so much time passing. Uh, I wanted to share that uh, that record with you. Um, so let's get right to it. Um, I'm going in reverse order, but that's okay. So the big news this week was the Permanent Waves um, package that's coming out for the 40th anniversary. Uh, I did a quick poll on my uh, Rush page group. It looks like most of you are going to buy the deluxe package. It looks like there's going to be three variations, uh, LP, uh, CD, and uh, the deluxe package, which I think will obviously be both CDs and LPs, and we'll have a book and probably some other things in there that we don't know about yet. So that's very cool. Uh, me personally, I am just going to pick up the probably the CD and the digital package. Um, I was going to, uh, for those of the, those of you that don't know, there's a number of live tracks that will uh, be on that CD package, and I was going to share screen, but I seem to have lost the option. So for those of the for those of you that don't know. Um, there's going to be uh, some excellent live tracks recorded from that tour. Beneath, but uh, between and behind, live in Manchester, Viper and the Snow Dog, live in London, Xanadu, live in London, Spirit of Radio, live in Manchester. 
Natural Science, live in Manchester, The Trees, Manchester, Cygnus X1, live in London, Cygnus X1 Book 2, so Hemispheres in full, I guess, uh, London, Close for the Hard, live in Manchester, and Jacob's Ladder, live in Missouri. So, going to be, so, oh, there's one more, hang on one second, uh, Free Will, live in London, is the, the last track on disc two or LP number two for that package, so that's going to be amazing. I uh, look forward to it. We finally have some live material from that uh, tour. Now, if I remember correctly, there are a few tracks that are on exit stage left that were recorded from the Permanent Waves tour. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I'd have to go back and check the notes. Uh, but uh, I think, if I remember correctly, that's that's a fact. And I think uh, natural, not natural science, didn't make it to exit stage left, but uh, Jacob Ladder. I believe is on there and I believe that was from the Permanent Waves Tour. So it'll be nice to have almost a full show. Um, and also another note on that, if the entirety of Hemispheres is there, that's amazing because on the, the, the Hemispheres 40th package, uh, they didn't put a full version of Hemispheres on there, um, which I was kind of surprised. Um, they just did a couple of segments of it, so I was a little disappointed with that being the 40th anniversary package of Hemispheres that they didn't put Hemispheres on it, but whatever, that's okay. We only know that these guys, Rush only has so much material to work with in the vaults, and uh, hopefully we're all going to enjoy seeing more of that with uh, this Permanent Waves 40th release. So, super cool. All right. Let's, uh, let's jump forward. I want to show you some CDs and stuff that I have. Um, and I realized when I pulled all my CDs off the shelf that I don't have everything on CD. I guess I went digital at some point, um, being a digital man. And uh, I don't have all of their stuff on CD. If I do, um, it's missing because I have a lot of stuff. So anyway, I will show you. Um, some of the stuff I have, I do have the Time Machine uh, CD package, uh, came out in 2011, and this is probably one of my favorite tours, if not the one of the best tours uh, that I remember. This this was incredible. I saw both the 2010 leg and the 2011 leg in Toronto. Um, I saw th this was just so good. It was such an excellent show. I think a lot of you will agree. This was Rush at a peak, in my opinion. Um, and I think they peaked with Vapor Trails Tour, and then they peaked again here, just my personal opinion, but absolutely love this uh, CD. I don't have the vinyl, uh, but I, I have the digital package as well. Just, just absolutely one of my favorite live uh, productions. The version of Presto that is on here is actually better than the LP. And if you guys know your history, and I know you do, Rush, um, outfaded a lot of their tracks over the years for spatial reasons because they can only put so much music on LPs because of the limitations of technology at the time. So, flash forward, years later, Rush is able to, well, number one, Rush is a live band, always was, and they were able to play out these tunes probably much like they were originally intended without those fade-outs, or they changed it around a bit, but Presto is absolutely one of my favorite songs from this record. So, I'll leave that there, I'll move on to the next one. I've got my copy of Hemispheres. And I believe this is the digital remaster. It's the Anthem Wank 1014 version, whatever that is. Um, yes. And, okay. Yeah, it doesn't say much else, just the usual stuff on there. You can see the inside. Hemispheres, one of my favorite records, if not probably in my top five favorite Rush records. Hemispheres has such an impact. Uh, in the prog world, the rock world, and to Rush fans themselves. Um, you guys, you, I don't need to promote this album. You know how good this is. Uh, another peak for the band. And hang on, I'm going to scroll down. I've got some comments there. Um, ah, Joe says they didn't. Joe Pesh, uh, thanks, Joe. They, he says uh, they didn't play all of the Hemispheres in 1980 either. Okay, very good point. I love you guys because you're always correcting me on points, and uh, that's great. We keep it real that way. Okay, uh, I've got Rush, A Farewell to Kings. This is the deluxe package CD, um, or deluxe CD. This is kind of cool. Excellent stuff on here. I know you guys have probably seen this, but I will share it. And you can see the three 
CDs there. Um, in one of my last videos, I showed you the deluxe package. I did an unboxing video of the deluxe 40th uh, package for this. Um, so that's my CD copy that I didn't have. Uh, so I got that uh, fairly recently. So that's awesome. I think you guys uh, have probably listened to a lot of the tracks on that. There's some good stuff on there and some good covers and a live performance as well. So excellent. Okay, the closing bookend, sadly, to the Rush chapter. And uh, we all know what this is. We, I believe most of us know this very well. And this is my Clockwork Angels CD. I have the LP gatefold. And uh, I have the digital version as well. So there are the guys inside. Absolutely love this record. Longer, more relaxed tunes. And since Rush was really trying to loosen up, as you know, when they recorded this record, um, they even improvised a lot more than they did in the past uh, with this. And you can feel it on the record. It's just a, a loose type of playing, but so tight as well, being Rush. Um, and just a lot of... Um, ambiance with the songs okay and uh, they, they seem very at this time at this point in history they're very happy with what they were doing and who, who knew that this would be the final one who knew this would be the garden would be the last song uh to ever be a scooter released by rush very sad but it's a part of our lives now and it's a chapter of rush uh and the ending of rush in that sense so let's hope getty and alex might do some more work down the road They'll never be rushed again. There will no, be, no longer be a rush. That's a sad thought, but we have the memories, right? Okay, next up, Signals. This came out when I was in high school, 1982. I have the LP on the wall right now. Uh, I've got collector's picks on it. Um, absolutely amazing music uh, and uh, musicianship on this record. So tight, ahead of its time. Rush was experimenting with new sounds at this point. Absolutely amazing. People uh, love love this, absolutely love it. The ones that don't like it, I've talked to people about it and they've come back years later and discovered it from a musician's point of view and absolutely love it. Um, sounds like The Weapon, as an example, Analog Kid, just everything on this is great. There's, I don't think there's a bad, bad tune on this. All of it. Okay, next up, Test for Echo. I love this record. A lot of people did not like it. Uh, they didn't like Dog Ears, as an example. That's one of the heaviest songs they've ever done. I thought it was really, really good. Um, this is very 90s, so 90s, but the lyrics are well done. The, the sound quality is very excellent. Just a great record all around. I think it's I think it's a great record. I uh, really enjoy it. So put it over there. Okay, Counterparts. Now, this is the one that people missed out on because right in my opinion rush went electronic for a number of years and a lot of fans left and then they didn't come back when rush made their return to hard rock just the guys limited production limited keyboards synthesizers and effects bare bones rock and roll this album is one of the best playing records i have the cd i have the lp obviously digital and absolutely amazing i love this record the playing, the quality, so good. And you guys tell me what you think about uh, Counterparts, because I believe that a lot of people that, as I said, missed this, uh, this and Roll of Bones, when they came back and rediscovered the Rush catalog, they realized how hard this, this particular album rocks. Um, and the lyrics are absolutely amazing, and the, uh, the theme of the songs and the record. Really love it. So that's one pile of CDs. I got some more. Hang on. There's always more. Okay. Got my Russian reel here. And I was just speaking to a friend of mine about the version of Natural Science on this. Vapor Trails Tour. You watch the Vapor Trails bootleg that's on YouTube. I'm not sure who posted it, but there's the guys doing what I consider to be the best version of Natural Science. It is tight and aggressive. That's from this tour. Uh, Vapor Trails Tour. Um, absolutely love this record. A lot of people complain. Sorry, I may bring it back into the picture. A lot of people complain about the uh, bass tone on Gets Tone. The production was a bit unusual, but you know what? You get used to it, and with the right 
amount of uh, EQ and effects, you can you can easily work around that. The video, on the other hand, is incredible to watch. The, uh, the DVD or Blu-ray, absolutely amazing show. And they're having so much fun, and the, the fan impact is crazy. The amount of fans, I think it's the biggest, if I recall, the biggest number, um, uh, biggest number of people, 50, 60, 70,000, something like that, the three nights that they recorded these shows in, in Brazil. Uh, amazing, amazing the, the impact of the audience too. They're so into it, it's great. So anyway, one of my favorites, great live show. Okay, another great live show, the R40 show in Toronto. I was at the very first one. I wish I'd gone to both, I did not. And I really wish I had uh, gone to both knowing that it was gonna be the last time, you know? But uh, anyway, that's life. That's the way it goes, right? We have the memories. I bought this. It's a little beat up. I got it cheap. I needed this. I have digital, and I do not have the LP, uh, but I may get it. We'll see. It's okay. Um, but this is cool. I'm going to open it up and show you. There's some cool stuff in here. And I really enjoy it. I'll show you the back. There's the back. So you've got the uh, crowd. You've got... The packaging, as I said, this version is a little bit beat up, but the CDs are in good shape, so I got a good deal on it. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it, so there you go. There's the R40. The packaging looks amazing. And again, my gosh, they did Hemispheres. They did so many great songs on this tour. Nanadu. They didn't do Bitor, but that's okay. They played that a lot over the years. I was hoping for Bitor and Fly by Night, but that's okay. They did Lakeside Park, you know? Um, who was expecting that, really? What else? Uh, they did Losing It. My God. Two versions, okay, on this tour. One with Ben Mink, one with Jonathan Dinklage. So, uh, little known facts. Uh, maybe it's well known. I don't know. But uh, Jonathan Dinklage is Peter Dinklage's uh, brother. Peter Dinklage uh, from Game of Thrones and many other uh, different uh, movies and productions. So, very cool. Um, you know what, I've compared both versions of Losing It with the different guys playing uh, electric violin. They're both equally amazing. Absolutely. Now, here's another fact that some of you may not know. Getty actually wrote a bass part. I was reading in an interview or some liner notes or something. Getty wrote a bass part for this track, for the live performance of Losing It, because there wasn't on the original uh, Signal LP. There was not a... Uh, a bass track to go with that so you had to write one if you listen to that it's really awesome really awesome bass playing on that absolutely that song gives me chills every time i hear it uh, what else they did uh sickness x1 jacob's ladder natural science another great version just so many awesome tracks the main monkey business uh, losing it uh, we already talked about how it is another one never performed live it sounded amazing really really good live production so anyway r40 you guys probably have this most of you it's it's great so let me scroll down make sure okay the music in the background alan is muffled okay all right it's really some uh, blues playing right now but that's good to know I'll, I'll work on the mix next time thank you uh, okay feedback so i've got the feedback cd and i've got the lp as well the lp i think i showed you in one of my videos uh last time it's a beautiful gatefold absolutely love it it would be awesome frank um a lot of people didn't care for this um and actually the there you go that's what it looks like on the inside i think that's a really excellent shot of rush and i really like the design and the artwork i think it's really cool um the lp looks just like this as well and i was thinking it would be really cool to frame it um Again, a lot of people didn't care for the covers, but you know, this was Rush doing covers. This was Rush doing covers of their favorite music uh, from bands that influenced them. Okay, the music just stopped, so I'll leave that off for now. Um, really liked it. They did the Seeker live on the R30 tour. I thought that was great. And also uh, the Shape of Things, they did that. Um, you know, take this for what it's worth. There's some really good tracks on here and good playing. I think, I think, and they're having fun doing it. So I think this is very cool that they did these and included some of those tracks uh, on that tour. For those of you that were there, uh, R30 in 2004, I was there again in Toronto. All my Rush shows have been in Toronto because I live 
just north of Toronto. Okay. Uh, show of hands. This is so good. I have the LP. I've got CD and digital, obviously. I love this record. Also, this is Rush in their prime. Um, this is amazing. This uh, Maybe not in their prime, but this is 80s Rush. They sound so good. They had a very unique sound on this tour. And there are these two tours that were captured uh, for this production. And I think it was uh, what, Fire Windows and one other. You guys will call me out on that. Hold your fire. I think a couple tracks from that tour made it to this as well. Um, really, I call this this era of Rush the Sonic era. They had clean, tight, very aggressive um, digital sound. And they were just at a peak right now at, on this tour. Watching the video, even more so. I know this show of hands video originally came out on VHS and I still have that somewhere and I watched that for so long until it came out on DVD obviously but just excellent to watch that tour it's so good and the guys are having such a good time on stage so pick that up if you don't have it okay because it's it's a must listen okay all right what else snakes and arrows got my snakes and arrows uh, CD here um, I have I'm oh, sorry this is snakes and arrows live my mistake um, I have Snakes and Arrows, and I have Snakes and Arrows live. There is one of the best live versions of Digital Man ever recorded here. The bass playing, the drumming, Neil is just intense. Alex is intense. Everybody is just playing at a peak. Best version of Digital Man live. The drums, the bass line. Again, they they extended the track out. Um, I I won't say it's better than the studio version of the signal. It's just a different version. And it's live, and this is Rush Live. This is a loud record, and but there's some amazing tracks on here, so pick this up. I actually saw this tour, and I saw the Snakes and Arrows tour as well. Those guys had a tight, um, very tight sound on that tour. Uh, the uh, the stage production was incredible. The drum kit was amazing. One of my favorite drum kits, if you recall, the big red, kind of candy red uh, drum set. Uh, almost a burgundy red, really. With the, with the snakes logo absolutely great tour so check this out if you don't have it it's it's a really awesome uh, live performance okay so what's next r30 r30 okay everybody remembers this again we were talking about r30 uh tour 2004 um excellent tracks on here and hang on a second i'll just open it up yeah, we have, this is where they open the show, the R30 Overture. So that's about um, 12 minutes, maybe a bit longer, of instrumental rush doing uh, several of their earlier tunes uh, brought, brought together uh, into that opening medley. Um, it's great, the R30 Overture, Finding My Way, Anthem, Bastille Day, Passage to Bangkok, Cygnus X1, and Hemistries. And I remember that. And then they jumped in the Spirit of Radio. I remember that live. Such a great moment. Um, some great tracks on here. Force 10, Animate, Subdivisions, Earthshine. Um, yeah, R30. Uh, Earthshine's on here. Red Barchetta, Roll the Bones, The Seeker, again. Um, the cover song, uh, The Who's, The Seeker. Um, oh, actually, that's just... I must be missing a pack, part of this package because I've only got... Uh, part of it here with just three and four. Anyway, um, drum solo, um, amazing. Resist, okay. Do you remember the acoustic version of Resist on here is one of the most moving uh, pieces I've ever heard. Very different from the uh, like live version or studio version uh, of Resist, which is also an incredible song, powerful lyrics. The version on here, I love it. Absolutely, it's just Getty and Alex uh, doing an acoustic version right after the drum solo. Uh, on that tour, and I remember that moment was so good. So pick this up if you don't. I don't know why it's over there again. I'm, there you go. Pick this up if you don't have it. Very, very excellent, excellent record, and the DVD as well. Pick that up also. Uh, Ray Limelight is the best mix live. Yes, I agree, absolutely. Okay, different stages. Okay, I think 1998, if I'm not mistaken, and dedicated to Jackie and Selena. Now, you want to get sad, we're not going to get into that right now, okay? But, uh, like Neil, I'll just say this, Neil suffered more than a man should, okay? 
and he picked himself up from the tragedies that are mentioned in this record and everything that happened and went on and put his life back in order and then unfortunately got sick unfortunately that's life and i'm sad very sad for his family as well and anyway i don't want to talk about that much more as i said i believe 1998 it captures the test for echo tour if i remember correctly and a lot of people complained about the bass tone on this one too and that was interesting because the complaints that were coming out when this came out were that there was too much bass i read an article and a, a person wrote in and said there's too much bass playing and the bass is too heavy and too powerful and i don't like it and i was thinking how can you be a rush fan and not like the bass tone i thought number one the mix is Okay, you're entitled to your opinion, but the mix is amazing on this. This is really, really good. Um, and it was the first taste of that Hammersmith Odeon um, live show as well from, I believe, Farewell to Kings tour, which we got the full show later with the Farewell to Kings 40th. So, again, correct me if I'm wrong, okay? I'm going on memory, and I'm getting older, and my memory's going a little bit. So, anyway, um, the bass tone on this I thought was great. It was a great mix. The guys play amazing on this. It's, there's powerful music on here. I really love it. I love the sample show that we got. Okay. At Farewell to King's Tour. This is raw. Really raw. They've got Bite Tour on here, which is my favorite Rush song. Um, and Getty is just at a peak with his voice in the live show. Okay. In that presentation. The um, different stages live. There's some great, great stuff on here. Dreamline, Line Line Again, Bravado. Uh, show me don't tell uh, show don't tell is on here the trees closer to the heart 2112 test for echo roll of bones leave that thing alone uh, the rhythm method drum solo natural science also an excellent version just so many good tracks on here i don't know why anybody would complain about it but if i recall the article i read the person was not like a super rush fan so they were a little bit unimpressed with the bass tone and that it was so in your face i thought this was good it captured getty's crunchy tone um on this uh, uh recording really i really enjoy this cd so grab that if you don't have it uh, again you can find it uh, just about anywhere probably rush.com um, and the lp as well you can i've seen several copies fairly cheap and good quality copies on discogs okay so check that out if you don't have it, okay? It's kind of a must. Okay, next up, Vapor Trails, original version. I do not have the, uh, I only have this version on CD. I do not have the remix version other than on digital. I honestly have not done a full listen comparison. I've always been kind of a Vapor Trails purist, and a lot of people disagree, and that's fine. Um, I like this for what it represents. A uh, yes, the production is not great. Yes, it's overproduced. Yes, it's crunchy and noisy. I like it. It feels like Rush went into a garage and recorded. That's what it feels like. Like Rush uh, became a garage band while they made this. That's what it feels like to me. Um, and I'm sure a couple, I will say, a couple of the tracks that I've heard um, from the remix version. Um, sounds definitely good there's more fidelity to it they've filled out the uh, the landscape or the soundscape more uh you can hear more um uh, the guitar work uh the drums of course either either recording or either production the drums are amazing um of course neil's just pounding away in this record the lyrics obviously very powerful really good record whether you like the remix or whether you like this again i can't judge because i'm a purist about this one and again, I'll talk about what it represents to me. It, it represents the return of Rush. And uh, so for me, it's Rush returning after those tragedies and just that grungy sound to it. Um, it sounds like they're back and we've been through a lot and here we are and here we go. So I will do a full comparison at some point of the, uh, the remix version with this, just for my own knowledge, but uh, my own experience. I'm not against any ever listening to music so it's all good um i will say the vapor trails tour i mentioned that earlier fantastic vapor trails live the guys were on fire they were 
just incredible. I'll never forget that tour, and I had great seats with my buddy Ray. We had such a good time. Great, great hot summer night in Toronto, and it was everything a, an outdoor summer rush show could be. Just excellent. So, Vapor Trails original. Pick that up. If you don't have it, check it out. Okay, Roll of Bones, a classic. 1991, I remember this well. I was in college. I had no money. Uh, I didn't have a car. I was driving in my friend's car. I was broke. No money. That means broke. Um, this this album was a game changer. I had it on cassette. And we played this over and over and over again. And yeah, a lot of people said, you know, the production wasn't great. It wasn't punchy enough. There wasn't enough ambiance. That's okay. Who cares? This was excellent. This is one of the best Rush records ever made. The lyrics alone, the, the music is just great. And one of my favorites will always be one of my favorites. Okay, so check that out. Ah, Snakes and Arrows. Okay, so when this came out, I was very impressed. And then after listening to it more, I couldn't get into some of the tracks on here. Uh, Faithless is one of them. I can't get into that. It's not the lyrics. It's just the music. It doesn't do anything for me. I've tried. Uh, and that's cool. You don't have to like everything. Armor and Sword, on the other hand, absolutely love it. Uh, Hope. Amazing, beautiful piece of music. Uh, Far Cry. That was the big radio hit. Far Cry, there were several versions of it going around, uh, radio version and a few others. Great song. Um, but again, after I listened to it a few times, I was like, eh, it's okay. It's funny, this record, there's some tracks on here I love, but it's not one I jump to uh, to listen to on a regular basis. But some of the tracks on here will make my playlist, definitely. Uh, again, as I said, Armor and Sword, love it. Working the Angels, classic. Larger Bull, very strong song. Spindrift, love Spindrift, excellent song. Main Monkey Business, one of the best jams, excuse me, ever made or ever done. Uh, the guys are playing so amazing. Uh, the Way the Wind Blows, not a huge fan, but I like it. Uh, again, Hope, beautiful acoustic piece from Alex. Faithless, not, not a huge fan of that song. Uh, Bravest Face, Bravest Face is a really good song. I like that. Uh, good News First, good song. Oh, Malignant Narcissism, amazing, amazing. And those airport, uh, if I remember rec reading correctly, those airport sounds are Japanese airport, and they mix that in to the, it was a great idea, really cool. Um, and We Hold On, also a good song, not one of my favorites, but, you know, it's all good. So, yeah, um, pick that up, though, if you don't have it. Again, the tour was incredible. Um, absolutely loved it. So. I want to show you a few more things. Those are my studio and live CDs. Okay, and I've got a few more. I'm just going to scroll down. Okay. And again, for those of you that just came on, um, I'll be reposting this uh, after it's recording live. So um, I'll put it up uh, once I'm done. And um, feel free to come back and check it out if you want. I'll put it on my YouTube page as well. Okay, next up. I think I showed you a couple of these, but I've got some uh, compilation, I've got some bootlegs, and I've got a couple of solo records. I will show, show you this stuff very quickly. Subdivisions, I think I showed this to you before. It is a tribute record, and uh, there's some cool stuff on here, cool players, uh, musicians, Sebastian Bach, Robert Berry, David Brooks, um, Randy Jackson, uh, Mike Mangini, um, Jeff Stinko, Kip Wigner. Um, there's some really excellent playing on here for some tribute songs. So check this out if you don't have a Rush subdivisions. Check it out on YouTube. That's the beauty of the internet and YouTube. You can pretty much find anything you want to hear first before you spend money on it, right? And uh, listen to it. The songs are just an early warning, Lakeside Park, Limelight, Subdivisions, Different Strings, um, Tom Sawyer, Bastille Day, Farewell to Kings, Spirit of Radio, Didact, Didacts and the Narpeds, uh, 2112, Temples of Syrinx. So, uh, again, and uh, premix editing by Terry Brown on this, okay? And the producer was Robert Berry. So check this out, okay? Because it's, it's good quality production, um, and there's some really neat variations of those Rush songs on here. So check that out if you get a chance, okay? Next up. Uh, I think I showed you a couple of these, but I'll jump in anyway. I did, I think I showed you a couple of my bootlegs in one of the videos, but I'll show you this anyway. This is Red Star of the Solar Federation. 
This came from my good buddy Philip. And again, Philip, thank you. This is the uh, live Montreal show from uh, 81 from Movie Pictures Tour that was produced to Exit Stage Left to the LP, obviously. This is kind of an interesting um, uh, one big track, and it's got that live performance, but it's also got some um, interview clips uh, mixed in. Uh, this is very cool, actually. It's a very cool listen. I listened to it in the car a couple times uh, about a month ago or two months ago. Um, and it has um, some of those interview clips are from, if you recall, when Exit Stage Left came out on VHS, um, and I think there was another VHS called The Camera Eye. Do you remember Neil doing commentary over the opening of the music leading into the live uh, start of the show or the start of the show of the live show um, it captures some of those interview clips on here and it's interspersed in between the songs so it's kind of interesting so whoever did this did a really good job um, I don't know the history on this but check this out if you can find it again red stars of the solar federation okay um, it's it's yeah recorded live in Montreal forum May 81 okay so it may not be the actual uh, show that was used uh, for extra stage left, but it was definitely that tour. Limelight, Tom Sawyer, Trees, Xanadu, Red Barchetta, Free Will, Close to the Heart, Light Run, Snow Dog, uh, In the End, In the Mood. Now, that brings up another point. On extra stage left, Light Run, Snow Dog was not included uh, with that LP release, and sadly, it would have sounded so good because uh, you know they do it. Um, they do it, and they do it amazingly. Getty's bass playing is absolutely incredible. The band, the guys are so tight. You know the uh, the track I'm talking about is on the uh, the DVD and the VHS, Fight During Snow Dog, live from that Exit Stage Left show. Amazing. So that's on here, too, on this bootleg. So anyway, if you see that around, let me know. I can even uh, digitize a copy and get it up on YouTube if you're interested. So just shoot me a note. I will do that. Um, the next bootleg I have is the story of Rush. Again, thanks to my good buddy, Philip. Story of Rush. Excellent. This is the uh, the video, I believe, the video production. Okay. All right. Hemispheres, bootleg, waltz of the Shreves. Okay. This is one of the few Hemispheres bootlegs that are out there that are of excellent quality and totally worth getting and listening to. Okay. Uh, very well known Hemispheres bootleg. Uh, one of my favorites. I've had this for years. That's why it's in an old jewel, crappy jewel case. Uh, with a print uh, insert that I did myself on some old piece of junk printer I had many years ago. That's how old this is, okay? You can get it online. It's everywhere now. YouTube, uh, for sure, okay? Check that out. Great live show. You guys probably know about it. Another Rush bootleg, Bottle of Booze. Excellent show. Show you that. Uh, this one is also a Hemispheres bootleg. I believe it's part two of Waltz of the Shreves, and I am not sure what the title of this is. I think it's part two. I could be wrong, but I have this old, I got a lot of these old Rush bootlegs in jewel cases, and uh, I made these a long, long time ago, um, and that's why they're in rough shape. So I don't know. I'll listen to that and see what it is. You never know what you're going to find. Here's another one I have, Visions and Illusions. Uh, version 2.0, again, a printed jewel case, you can't really see, or excuse me, a printed uh, insert. You can't really see the songs on here, but it's live uh, from Soundboard, um, Ontario, April 16, 1986. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, live at the Spectrum, Philadelphia. Um, again, a lot of the guys that made these things back in probably the 90s and 2000s, um, they made some very interesting um, artwork for the covers of these and a lot of the bootlegs you see floating around online now um, they use a lot of that artwork with it and that's one of the reasons i started collecting these not just for the music but i like the artwork um, i just thought there was some interesting variations of artwork um, that, that were made uh, to go along with with uh, bootlegs that were made back in that era okay so um, a couple more things to show you i'm just going to scroll down okay uh solo records Hang on a second. Oh, I've got another compilation here. Um, this is Rush, the Spirit of Radio. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll show you the back. 
Here we go. This is uh, a compilation record. It's Rush. Uh, Working Man, Fly by Night, 2112. It's all their hits, basically. Tom Sawyer, Fly by Night, Free Will. All studio versions. Uh, Force 10 is on here, and Time Stand Still. It's kind of a cool thing. I think this was an official uh, release. If I'm not, yes, it is. Anthem. Um, kind of a cool thing to have. This would be a good uh, starter CD if you have somebody who wants to experience Rush. I want them to listen to this. If you haven't, this will get them started. Okay. Um, okay. I've got another bootleg here. This one's called Mystery Eyes. I'll show that to you. All right. And. This is the Moving Pictures Tour. This is a great sounding bootleg. Um, and it's got the entire show on here. 2112 Free Will, Limelight Hemispheres Preludes, Beneath Between, Behind Camera Eye, YYZ with the drum solo, uh, Bruins Bane, they, they mistype here, Bronze Bane, uh, The Trees, Xanadu. Uh, side two, Spirit of Radio, Red Bar Cheddar, Close to the Heart, Tom Sawyer, Vital Signs, Natural Science. Uh, the medley, famous uh, moving pictures to her medley, Working Man Hemispheres, Armageddon, Fighter on Snow Dog, In the End, In the Mood, 2112 Grand Finale, and then La Villa Strangiato. Best, one of the best versions of La Villa Strangiato. Same tour, same version that made uh, the last track on side four, disc two of Exit Station F. I played that thing for that LP for like a year when I was about 17. Never that and all the world to stage. I sat on my turntable, the two of them, I just flipped them back and forth. And for like a whole year, that's all I did. <laughs> that's all I did. I didn't go to school, I just listened to Rush. Anyway, okay. Next up, solo records. Geddy Lee. Uh, I think I might have talked about this before. Geddy Lee, My Favorite Headache, released in 2000. I know the uh, vinyl just came out recently, I think in November. I do not have a copy. I know a lot of you got the cop got a copy of it. Uh Excellent record, excellent record. Um, very good uh, lyrics, very good musicianship, good production. Um, a lot of people, you know, it's funny, I'm going to show you the next one is Alex's, okay? Not everybody likes Alex, so this is Victor. This is Alex's solo record. Both were done during the Rush hiatus, okay? When Neil experienced his tragedies, the guys, the Rush disappeared, as you know. This was the product, the products that were made during that time period and came out um, after that period of time. So, both very good records, in my opinion. Alex's record is very experimental. There's some really good tracks on here. And if you go to my uh, Will's Rush page, in my notes section, I did a very small write-up on this. And I broke it down, in my opinion, to the best tracks. Um, I like this record. Put this on if you're going on a road trip, okay? Listen to it. it. There's some good stuff in here. There's some funny stuff. There's some dark stuff in here. There's some really neat things in here. It's, it's classic Alex, and it's very creative. Um, again, this is not something, this one here, Alex's record, it's not something you're going to love right away. Just give it some time. You may not like it. A lot of people don't, and that's cool. All good. Getty's, on the other hand, okay. This one is certainly more popular. Uh, some excellent playing, as I said. People really dig this one. Um, and like I said, there's some really good, good uh, Runaway Train as an example. Really good tunes on here. Uh, Getty's playing is incredible. Um, but again, it's to each his own, right? So, you know, you, you don't have to like it. That's the thing about music, right? You might not like it right away. You might love it after four or five listens. You just give it time. Maybe stuff's going on in your life and you're just not in the right headspace and it's not sinking in. Then you give it a, a, a listen a year later and it hits you. Oh, this is great. That's the beauty of music. It's timeless, right? You never know. So, same thing with this one. If you don't know this one, check it out. Check them both out. Again, you can get these anywhere. They're on YouTube. You don't have to pay for it. Just check it out. If you like it, then you buy it, okay? All right. So, that covers the CDs. Um, I'm going to show you some DVDs. Uh, we talked about Neil a little bit. Uh, we talked about the Permanent Waves 40th, so, and we went over the track listing uh, that's coming with that, uh, the live performance as well, uh, live tracks. Um, we talked about Neil a little more. Every video we talk about Neil a little more just because of the impact that it's had on all of us, and it's really hard to summarize all of that. 
So, um, in words, anyway. Uh, and oh, also, I want to say before I show you my DVDs, I want to mention that Neil's books are available now for through Audible.com. Okay, and I'm not plugging Audible, but I am plugging what's happening here. Uh, Neil's books, all of his, all of his books are available for audio download through Audible.com. You just st sign up, uh, and they're free. And the proceeds from those books are going to the Neil Peart uh, Cancer Fund or whatever it's called that was set up for him. Okay, um, so I, my buddy of mine told me about it. I have most of or some of Neil's books, and uh, there's a few I don't have. So I went and got them all, um, and it didn't cost me a thing. And Audible's donating that money, so it's a really good cause. So if you want to make a, a difference and and help out that fund. Uh, I think it's a great thing, and it's a great thing that Audible's doing. Um, and I'm not sure if they're still available, but check. I believe they are. And uh, like I say, you can get all the books for uh, for free, um, which is really nice. And you can reading Neil's books or listening to them in audio form if you're into audio books. Totally, it will totally give you more insight into the man um, and his take on on life and music and religion and everything just everything it's it uh, when i first read ghost rider that was the first book i read of neil's it pulled me right in excellent read um very dark story obviously but just his writing style really i really like his writing style um and and there's a reason he's, he was not only the lyricist for the band but uh just an excellent novelist um because he writes from the heart and he's also a tell it like it is kind of person or was uh, so anyway, back to Audible. Uh, check it out because you can get those books, put them on your phone, um, and you can listen to them in the car while you're traveling. It's great. I think it's a great thing. It's a great cause. Okay. All right. So DVDs. Let's pull those over. Uh, not all my DVDs are here. There's some I've loaned a couple out, and the others are downstairs somewhere. I'll have to fish them out. Um, so Time Machine. DVD, and most of you guys probably have this. Or, um, again, this is a great live show. I was watching this uh, the other night. Absolutely love this DVD. Packaging is beautiful. Uh, it's still in my player right now, but you can see that here. That beautiful packaging. Again, amazing tour. Um, and there's some really great um, bonus material tracks on here. And that's the nice thing about the DVDs. Lots of bonus material. Lots of cool stuff uh, that they, they throw in for us as fans. Uh, videos from the shows, opening, closing videos, those type of things. Um, so yeah, check that one out if you don't have it. Uh, next up, Snakes and Arrows. Great, great production on this. Great look, great feel, um, and uh, excellent uh, live performance. Check this out. You guys are on fire, OK? Uh, whether you, as I mentioned earlier, if you like snakes or not, you might like some of it. There's some great, great production on this. Really, really good playing. Okay. Um, got my R40 here. I think most of you probably have this. Um, this is so good. So good. The production is amazing. The, the, the de-evolving set list, or stage, um, I should say. The de-evolving stage um, from beginning of time backwards. What a great way to uh, do a show. Absolutely amazing idea. And uh, it was so much fun. This tour was just great. So check that out. You don't have it? Clockwork Angels. Okay. So interesting uh, uh, thought around Clockwork Angels. When the digital, when it first came out, CD, uh, and the digital uh, release came out, I downloaded it from iTunes. The MP3s, unfortunately, just couldn't bring justice to the music. There was so much going on with the live performance that the MP3s were crunched up. So everything was crammed into those MP3s, um, and it just did not do it justice. So I went and bought the CD, and that made such a difference. It was a higher quality audio. You could hear everything um, because keep in mind, you know, there's a live presentation with an orchestra and Rush, obviously. And uh, again, if you're into audio quality, and I like all kinds of audio quality, and I like all kinds of formats, but I found that there was way too much happening in this live performance to be crunched into those little files. So 
when I bought the CD, it sounded so much better. So keep that in mind. If you weren't impressed with the quality of your digital package for this, check out the CD or the DVD. The Blu-ray is a Blu-ray. Um, absolutely amazing. Great show. Great performance. I need to watch this. I haven't watched this for a couple of years. Um, really, really good production. And uh, how cool is it? Right? How cool is the Rush stuff you know, with with the, the orchestra on the live performance? So there you go. Okay. So what's left? Uh, I've got R30 here. Another great DVD package. Really good stuff on here. Extra stuff. I've got my Russian Rio here. Again, excellent package. I mean, we only have so many Rush DVDs, uh, obviously, and there probably won't be many more, I don't think. Um, but this is a must-have. And, again, some are missing. I've got more downstairs, like the Rush movies and the documentaries. I've loaned out two of them. Um, and I've also got a production video, um, classic, uh, classic rock production video of the making of moving pictures uh, in 2112. Um, that's well done, the interview with Terry Brown. I don't have that with me, but uh, I'll show that to you next time. The interview with Terry Brown and the guys, and they talk about the production song by song for both those epic records. And uh, that's also a very good uh, video. Available on YouTube, of course, and uh, iTunes as well. Okay, and finally, uh, this came out a number of years ago, and this is Rush Replay times three. This is great because they re-released the first three Rush uh, music uh, movies on this box set. And it's got uh, Rush Exit Stage Left, uh, Grace Under Pressure Tour, and a show of hands. Um, and then also it came with a bonus CD, which is a live, um, live CD from the Grace Under Pressure Tour uh, soundtrack. So I'll show you the back. <laughs> Excuse me. See? So it's got the original three Rush VHSs, which are DVD here. Uh, those are the first three Rush movies ever released. And then they added in that bonus CD. And if you haven't heard that, that's an amazing live show because it's the Grace Under Pressure Tour. So 84. Uh, I believe it's from Toronto. I was there for two of the three nights. I paid $15 each night to see them. And it was excellent. And uh, if I remember correctly, this live performance, Grace Under Pressure Tour, is from that show, one of those shows in Toronto, uh, 1984, and it's excellent. And there's a version of the weapon on here, absolutely incredible. Live version, the guys are super tight. Check this out if you can get your hands on this. I don't know if we can still buy this, um, but is super cool so if you see it around let me know um because i'd be curious to know if it's still out there i haven't checked uh, but it's got great package here i'll show you the inside bum, bum, bum. okay so check it out it opens as such okay and then you can open a little further and there is a uh, a book inside for each tour oh the cds are missing here too so i gotta get organized um, and I'll show you the books that are inside. Okay, so you've got the Grace, Grace Under Pressure. Sorry about the glare. Let's bring it over there. Grace Under Pressure. You got Show of Hands. Show of Hands. And those are pretty cool. There's, a, there's actually a very lot of detail, a whole lot of detail in here. And photographs from each of those tours as well. It's nice that they included all that stuff and exit stage left. Okay, and again, there's a right up here. It looks a lot like the program. Check that out. That's the stage love in our moving pictures program. Okay, um, it looks like a lot of the artwork is used. Obviously, it's from the same tour. I'll show you a couple of shots. Oh, yeah, look at that crossword. Remember the old program, uh, moving pictures program they used to put, and I think a few other they put crosswords in and all kinds of cool stuff. And you can see this is uh, all the records are represented, studio records are represented there and live up to permanent waves. Uh, so because this is the moving pictures tour, so there we are. So some cool stuff in here. Crosswords, a lot of detail, a lot of write-up too. Like there's a lot of text information in these booklets. So check that out. Oh, here's a good shot, Alex. You guys probably remember that shot. 
Alex with all his guitars and Neil standing up playing his chimes. So how cool. Just great stuff. Anyway, this, this is uh, got the three shows, as I mentioned. And uh, that X the Stage Left performance and the show of hands and even the Grace Under Pressure, three of the best live shows ever. X the Stage Left is one of my favorites. My only complaint is that it's not longer. I wish they had included the full show, including Hemispheres and Pytor and uh, a couple of the other pieces, but that's okay. The technology was limited, as you know, uh, when these live productions were made. And so obviously we got what we got. And then years later, they were able to uh, come up with more cool stuff. So anyway, pick that up if you have uh, don't have it. It's uh, worth it. And it's a nice way to get all three shows together. Okay. So I think that covers it this, guy, this time, guys. Uh, we've covered pretty much everything. Um, I will show you a couple other things quickly. As I showed you last time, I think, but for those of you who might have missed one of my other videos, I'll show you a couple of uh, 45s that I've got. I've got the Closer to the, closer to the Heart 7-inch, uh, which was the record store release. I've got two of these, actually. Uh, this one's for sale. Um, it doesn't have the spindle, 45 spindle, that was stuck here. My other one is framed. Um, this is kind of cool. Uh, I've got a copy of Closer to the Heart. I've got a copy of Vital Signs Live, which is, you can't really see that, but there you go. Um, I've got Time Stand Still, which is one of my favorites. They're all 7-inch, obviously, 45s. Um, and I've got this one, cool, which was a, a Record Store Day uh, release as well. And this is the Rush version of 7 and 7 is. Okay, which was on the R30 package, and this is the single release. It's kind of an unusual looking cover. And on the other side is Love's version of 7 and 7 is. So, again, kind of a cool thing. I'll show you the back side. So, what I plan to do with these, I was looking at frames on the weekend, and I would like to mount the 45s. I don't really play 45s, but these are cool collectors. So, I'm looking for framing idea where I can either put two or three of them in the same frame, but the problem is some of them will I want to look like this. I don't want to see the disc, I want to see the cover. Or maybe I could have where have it where the disc is halfway out or something like that. So that's kind of my plan. Whereas other ones that have basic packaging like this, I just want to mount the, uh, the actual disc. So I'm trying to work out an idea. Uh, where I can do that and display them all, and then I'll add in some artwork and a few other maybe small picks and collectibles and stuff like that. But I just really want to get it uh, framed and mounted and up on the wall. Um, so that's my plan. And part of that will be to have a copy of the Moon 45. So my plan is to mount that as well. It, it's been sitting in plastic for years. I should have that mounted. Uh, so I need to do that. So that's one of my ongoing projects. Um, and I think that's it. So, thanks for joining me today. I know this is a bit of a long-winded video, as I like to talk. Um, but, um, again, thanks for joining me. Will's Rush Page. I'm on YouTube. I'm on, uh, as Will's Rush Page. You can see, the, I'll put this video out there as well. And I've got, check out my YouTube page, because there's some older Rush videos in there. I've got some cool stuff that I've uploaded, things I find on my old zip drives uh, from the old days, and I put it up there. Any clips, anything like that, um, any news uh, bits or like interview bits uh, that I can put together into a video I like to put out there just for historical reasons and keep a record of it. Same on YouTube. So I've been trying to, uh, or same on my Rush page, I should say. I've been trying to align my YouTube page, uh, my Disc Dogs page, and my Will's Rush page on Facebook. So that I just have the three going. I'm on Twitter as well as Will's Rush page. So I have way too many social media platforms. Uh, so I'm trying to align them all so that it's easier to maintain. Uh, but again, thanks for joining me um, today. And, you know, I hope you have a great weekend. Um, tomorrow is Monday, February 17th. It's a holiday for me in Ontario. It's family day. So I'm uh, just going to chill out and relax, listen to some music. So keep collecting, uh, keep listening. 
and shoot me some ideas for the video. Let me know what you think. Um, let me know if the, you know, the music uh, or the voice or just give me some ideas of what you want to see. Also, maybe what, uh, what would you like to see next? I've got a pretty extensive Neil Young collection. Um, I have a pretty extensive, uh, fairly extensive, <coughs> excuse me, Blue Oyster Cult collection. Um, I've got some metal, heavy metal. I've got a box of stuff I still need to get through, so maybe I'll do a video around that where I just go through it and pull it out. There's a lot of 80s rock in there. Um, also, I am a fan of uh, 70s live shows. So um, 70s live shows, and I also like to collect gatefold records. So uh, if you think of anything uh, that you want to share with me, by all means, reach out to me, okay? Um, and um, send me your ideas. You know, we could uh, review some uh, gatefold records or live 70s live shows might be a, a good idea for a video. So anyway, shoot me your ideas. Take care. Peace. Hope you guys are well and uh, stay cool. Okay. Bye-bye.